Man, what is up my Well2 family? Hamar here, back with another Well tutorial for y'all. And today is a very important day. A lot of people have been wanting this, and it is the, the 12 by 12 branch. I know a lot of people have been wanting this. I got a one footer here, I got a two footer here. It's gonna be 250 wall, standard branch for the pipeline. So, I know I'm ready to burn. I'm gonna do the fit up, and I'm gonna weld it out. All right, let's get to it guys. All right, guys, we're about to start the fit up. I got the one for you here, 12 by 12 uh, template. We're gonna use the template for today. Um, in another tutorial, I'll show you how to do the blue book, but we're gonna use the template, make it nice and easy for y'all. I got my helper here at South Coast Welding Academy, Efren Reyes, say what's up, brother? How's it going, guys? All right. So at first, right now, we have a nice square markup. Make sure you have a soapstone right here. And now for the template, we're gonna go ahead. Remember, this is 250 wall, all right? We're gonna get our template right here. Now, for the one footer, make sure it's a square cut, okay? The square the cut it is, the better the, the fit up's gonna be, okay? But right now, this is a uh, manufacturing cut, so it's pretty square already, so that's the good part. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, we're going to wrap it around right on the square line, okay? Efren, help out right here, brother. Make sure it's right on the line. Make sure here is right on top of that bevel, right, right there on that line, right on that bevel line, right there. And you want the other side to be exactly the same. Now, this is the good part about having it a square cut. It's going to make it easier for you. Right there, right there. Now, we're gonna make sure it's on the line. Right there. Is it on the line over there, Efren? Nope. Okay, make sure it's on the line, brother. All right, I'm good here, good here. Good here. How about over there, brother? Is it on that line? Yep. All right. Let's see right there, on the line. On the line, all right, all right. So that's pretty much it right here, guys. See, this is what makes it easy with the template. But like I said, in another tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do blue book because the blue book gives it a better, better cut as well. Uh, just in case one of your templates gets wet or you lost it, you know how to do it with the blue book. So that'll be another tutorial, but I'm trying to make it easy for y'all, okay? So right now we have it square cut, square cut right here. We have it on the square line. Both of these right here are hitting the top of that bevel nice and evenly. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and mark it up. So, let's start it right here. You wanna make sure there's no loose spots at all. No loose spots, make sure it's nice and tight on there. Slap it on there if you need to. Go ahead on this part right here. Now, check this out. It's already perfectly aligned. Ready to cut, okay guys? Now, check this out. The good thing about having a template, when you go test out for the branch, sometimes you have a time limit from two to four hours, depending on who you're working for and everything like that, so a template comes in handy. Like I said, blue book comes in handy as well too. But when you have a template, you can just slap it on there and go for it, go to town with it, okay? So now I got it marked up real good, nice and wavy right here. So now I'm about to cut it out, okay? But when I cut it out, I'm gonna make sure it's a straight cut, no bevel cut, okay? Once you're good enough with the torch, once you're good enough with the torch, you can do a bevel cut, so you don't have to throw a, a grind of bevel on there. But for right now, I'm gonna do a straight cut and I'm gonna bevel it by hand, all right? Let's go do it.
All right, guys, I want to go ahead and bevel it. It's kind of a process. Sometimes you have a helper with you, sometimes you don't. So if you don't, you got to do it on, on your own. Um, but here I got the bevel all the way around, nice and clean. I polished it with a flap disc real good, clean the inside as well. Also, I put a little landing on there as well, okay? About a 16th land all the way around, sometimes 332. Now, I met guys as well that don't put landings, but I like a landing on there, okay? So just like that, and make sure you put a decent bevel, okay, a decent bevel, because when you put it right on the saddle, you wanna be able to stick that rod in there. If that rod doesn't stick in there because you don't have enough, enough bevel, okay? Put enough bevel in there, guys, okay? Just like that, all the way around. All right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna sit it right here. Sit it right on, let's see what it does. Not bad, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Now check it. Let me get a rod real quick. All right, so this rod, 6010 rod, it won't be able to fit it right in. You want to have enough bevel, you see? Enough bevel to stick that rod in there when you start doing your root pass, okay? If, you, if, your, rod, like if your bevel's not deep enough, it's going to be hard for you to throw that root, all right? Same thing over here. See, right on there, right on there, right on there, right on there, okay? Let's check the inside, see if it's good inside. I think it's sitting uh, pretty well. Now, we have a little bit of uh, some, uh, some light coming through here and there, but it's definitely workable, definitely doable. So let's try it out, guys. Let's sit on there right now. So if you want to mark the inside, because right now you got to mark the inside and you got to mark the outside of the bevel, okay? You can do it with the soapstone, but make sure your so uh, soapstone is sharp. But what I like to do is kind of like an old school trick, you know, uh, get the rod, sharpen it, just like a tungsten, and go in there and mark it up. So that's what exactly what we're going to do. All right. Let's check it out. If y'all see closely, y'all can see the line. Y'all see that? If y'all see it real closely, if you zoom enough, you can see that line. So what you can do is now, you can get the soapstone. Soapstone that I had right over here. And get that soapstone and mark it up little by little. Just mark it up, guys, little by little. It definitely takes some practice, guys. Um, for, for sure, for sure, it takes practice. Y'all get it. If enough practice, y'all get it for sure. All right. There you go. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this part out, okay? And while I cut this part out, make sure it's a straight cut, okay? No bevel, nothing. Just have it straight as well. You don't want to cut outside the line. You want to cut inside the line. You cut outside the line, it's going to mess up the whole entire fit. I'm telling you that right now. Make sure the cut is about right here in this spot, right here, right in the inside, right in the inside. Okay, if you mark, if you cut it right here, start cutting it outside like this, you know, it's gonna be totally messed up. So make sure it's in the inside. All right, let's go ahead and cut it out, guys. Alrighty guys, I cut out the mouth for y'all. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prep it up real clean so y'all can show y'all the finished product and how it's supposed to be clean, okay? But before that, make sure to have a rock, make sure you have a flap disc. Polish it up the same way you polish up that saddle, okay? Clean it up really, really nicely. Also, before that, I mean after that, go ahead and take the saddle, put it on there, 
and see how it fits. See how it fits, okay? If you have too much, that's why the rock is real good. If you have too much, that's too much in, too much meat, you can grind it real clean. You can, you can make your way with the grinder, okay, if you messed up the cut a little bit, you know? So that's why it's good to, to have a precise hand when you're cutting because if not, the more grinding you have to do. The better the cut is, the less grinding you have to do. So right now I'm 50-50 with it, so I need to work a little bit more on the cut, but it's okay. It's all a learning process, so let's get to it. All right, guys, I want to go ahead and clean it up real good for y'all. Come check it out and see how it looks when it's clean. Make sure to polish it really, really well, okay? Now, we're going to go ahead and do the fit up. So for the fit up, I use a 16th gap. I get two 16 ER70S2 filler rods, and I'll put them right next to each other just like so. And then tape them out. Now, you can use a 332. You can use a 1/8. It just depends on how you're taught. So I was taught to use a 16th, and that's the way I'm going to go. Everybody has a personal preference, guys. Same thing over here. Same thing over here. Make sure y'all guys have wedges as well, okay? Make sure you have a good wedge. Sometimes you're gonna have to hit it in there in order for that gap to open up the way you want it to. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and get them on there. Now, if it doesn't, if one side's flush, but the rest, you know, is a little bit of high-low here and there. You just even it out. But the goal is to have the ears flush together. All right, All right guys. This is your throat. This is your ears, okay? Throat, ears. So welding terms right there, welding slang. It is good to have a wedge. All right, get you a couple wedges. So if one side is real tight, okay, and the other side is real big, go ahead and tack, you know, the side that is not big, okay? So if you want to even it out, what you can do is put the spacer right in here, you know, just like that, and kind of just even out that gap, all right? Just like that. Now the rest is even. Come check it out on this side. If you see here, you can see that gap is all the way even, all the way around. Now, some spots might be a little, just a little bit, but it's it's mostly even, guys. And check the inside as well. We got both of the throats touching, just like that. All right. And come on this side over here. Got about the same thing. Now, like I said, guys, some parts are going to be a little bit higher, so you just got to control that uh, that machine, okay? All right, now we're tacking it up. Now, for the tack, I do no whipping motion. Uh, I do no Christmas trees. I drag it. It's just nothing but drag. But now, like I said, if you have a big gap and the fit's not right, you're going to have to whip it, you know, and that's, that's understandable. So there is some times while I whip it, there's sometimes I drag it, you know, it just depends on your fit. Still, you're, you're tacking on your throat area first. Um, do not tack where the straps are going to be bended or anything like that. Just tack right outside of it. Right here, you see arc shot. Just pushing that rod in there, just dragging it through. I'm running at third gear and 30 for a tight gap like that. Now, if it's a big gap, um, you probably want to run third gear and 20, 25. But like right here, it's pretty, pretty tight. So I'm running on third gear and 50. You just got to adjust your temperature, guys. Don't get used to just one temperature, all right? Right here, tacking the ears now. Man, I love pipeline. I, I, I love it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Tack on the other side. Make sure they're good tacks, guys. Make sure they're real good tacks. 
okay? Penetrating both walls. Adjust your machine accordingly. So, like I said, between third gear and 20 to third gear and, and 60 on the, on the remote. See here, like I'm dragging, but I'm kind of whipping it a little bit. It's fine, as long as it's hitting both walls on the inside. Same thing on the other side. So you want about eight tacks in total, okay? And I'm gonna go through it right now and let y'all know how I do this. I'm gonna feather them out and we're gonna go to town. All right, guys, I went to go ahead and tacked it up. Now I put eight tacks in total, okay? I put at the throats, I put one right here and one right here because they're gonna cut it right in the middle between the two. Same thing on the other side. Now on the ears, I did the same thing. They're gonna cut it right here. So I tacked it away from where they're gonna test it at. Okay, that's, that's the goal. You don't wanna attack it where they're gonna test it. Now, if you check the inside, this is how it's supposed to be tacked up. Right here. That's where they're gonna bend it at, so. Just like that, okay. Good. There you go, all right. All right, so. That's how it's tacked up. Now, we're gonna start welding, okay? But before that, you wanna get the piece that you cut from the mouth and put it right on top. All right, just like that. Right there. Put it like that, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna tack it right here, tack it right here, flip it over, put it on the jack stand, and we're gonna go to town with it, all right? All right, for the root pass, for the first, you want to get your throats first, okay? That's the hardest part, is the bottom side. So right now, I'm running at third gear and 35, okay? But like I said, sometimes the, the gap gets tight, so I go up five, maybe up 10, go down five, just depending. Whether you see that keyhole get big or not, you want to go down, okay? You, but you always want to do your root on the throats first. Those are the hardest side. Get both throats, okay? Here I'm getting the other side. Same thing, just drag it. But like I said, depending on your fit. So try to make the best fit as possible. Right here, I just dragged it. Maybe whipped it a little bit, just a mixture of both. All right, now I'm doing the ears, okay? So when I'm doing the root pass on the ears, I don't start right in the middle. You know, you wanna go a little bit uphill. Like I showed y'all before. Here I'm just kind of whipping it a little bit, you know? because we're going uphill. But as soon as you are about to go downhill, that's when you can start dragging it, okay? Right here it gets the most penetration, especially on the ears, it gets the most penetration. It just depends on your fit, guys. Make sure your fit is good. Now a big gap like that, I go third gear and 25. Just make sure it's, letting, it's hitting both walls. That's all that matters. If it's hitting both walls, you're fine. Make sure you feather your, your tacks real good if you want good tines, okay? All right, right here. Starting to come downhill on the ears to the throat. Now here's the, a good, good gap right here. I'm running at third gear and 30 right here, just dragging it. Once you get that feel, you'll, you'll, you'll know. You'll definitely know when it's in there and you can just drag it. You know, that's, that's the good part right there. Now here's a big gap. Maybe go down five more. You know, you just got to adjust it to the way you want it, just by the keyhole. Just looking at the keyhole. You see it get big, you got to go down. If you don't see enough keyhole, you got to go up, all right? All right, right here, I'm doing the opposite side. Now, I'm doing the whole thing for you guys, the whole branch, you know, both sides. You're just whipping it up, guys, whipping it up. You're running uphill a little bit, especially on the ears area. If you have to whip it, whip it. But make sure you see the inside, it's getting good penetration. But as soon as you adjust when you're going downhill, once it starts, you, it, gravity plays and you can just drag it right through. Now imagine if I had like a 332 gap or I had a 1 8 gap, man, it, it, will be a, it will be a pain to get that root in there. So the tighter the gap is, the more heat you put, the more you can drag and just flow with it. 
like I said, every, everybody has a personal preference. Everybody has per- preference on the heat. You know, some people like to run hotter. Some people like, people like to run colder. All right, right here, just dragging it too, guys. It's a perfect gap, so I'm just flowing with it. Now, you see how it's hitting both walls. It's just, fit, it's just going at a good pace. Pushing that rod in there, man. Important, pushing that rod. And also having enough bevel that you can push that rod in there. That's why it was important when I told you about putting enough bevel on that, on that saddle, okay? Now, you see my hand placement? Now, if you, I do one hand it's just because I feel comfortable like that. I have my hand on top so I can adjust it accordingly. I can turn it if I want to. But if you want to do it with two, you can do it with two. It's whatever you feel comfortable. Here's a perfect gap again, just dragging it right through. But you want to push that rod, man. You want to push that rod in there, making sure you're, you're getting that penetration. Because if you're long arcing and trying to drag, that keyhole is just going to either not come or the keyhole is going to get too big. But just watch it. Watch it. You all get it for sure. But make sure your angle of your rod, too, is about, about 20 degrees upwards, okay? All right, you can see my helper right there. I'm telling him up five, down five. It's good to have that remote, guys. Here and just dragging it again. Very, very important. Anything downhill, guys, you just want to drag it, okay? You don't want to, you know, Christmas trees or whatever I taught you on the 3G open route uphill or anything like that. You just want to drag anything pipeline. Just dragging. Or at least try, by the way. And that's the root pass. Okay, by, by no means, like I said, I'm, I'm not the best of the best, so... You know, there is probably a couple spots here and there, but it's definitely passable. It's in there. Um, good reinforcement. It's hitting both walls, and that's all that matters. So, you know, I'm, I'm being brave to show you all this, you know, because uh, it's uh, – I have no shame, man. I have no shame. I just – whatever I – you know, I'm doing the branch test for you all so you all can see – how I do it, you know, and the weld shots and everything because there's none out there, you know, and and I feel like uh, there needed to be one. So that's why I made this, guys. All right, guys, so I finished the root pass, okay? I cleaned it up real good, took off any discontinuities, any slag inclusions, anything like that, a trap slag, take it out. You want to make sure it's clean. Now, we're going to start the hot pass. Now, for the hot pass, you remember, this is where they're going to cut it at. Okay, so you want to start right about here. Okay, do not start right in the middle where they're going to cut it right here. Okay, we're using a 532 8010 pipeline rod to fill it up. You know, you can use an 8010 316th as well, but I'm comfortable with the 532. Uh, it's whatever your preference is. So I'm going to strike mark right here. You're going to kind of go uphill a little bit, just a little bit, and then you're going to turn. So my movement is going to be whipping whipping it all the way whipping whip don't over exaggerate those whips guys don't be going like this okay Just nice tight whips all the way let it build 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 just like that let it build let it build just like that all the way through depending on how my hot pass is and how big it is okay if it's a big hot pass i'll probably flush it out with the 532 two more passes for the fill but if it's kind of low and I feel like if I add this 532 for my fill and it's still going to be under flush, then I'll add a 316 uh, a pipeline rod, just depending on how it looks like. But that's the movement. Whip it, okay? Whip it for the hot pass. You're going to go uphill a little bit. Do not start on this middle section at all. Start right here. Another thing, guys, too, I'm going to stop right here, okay? I'm going to stop right here. I don't want to stop. This is where we're going to cut it out, too. I do not want to stop in the middle of that cut, okay? I want to stop right about here and then restart right here and finish it right here, okay? You want all your tines to be here and here, not here, okay? 
You want all your tines to be here, 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 not here. All right, guys, that's for the whole entire thing. When I come down, I'm gonna stop here, come right here, you know? I'll come right here, stop here, finish it, come right here. Same thing over here. I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna finish it right here, go from here, come over here, okay? Make sure you're not in the middle of those cuts, those lines, okay, where they're gonna cut it out. Let's get to it. All right, now for the hot pass, you still wanna run it uphill a little bit, especially on the ears, okay? Um, not right where that bend's at, don't start right there, where the straps are gonna be cut. Now here I'm running at third gear and 50. All right, third gear and 50. Um, same thing, same whipping it the whole way through. Make sure they're tight whips, letting them stack next to each other really, really well. Make sure it's hitting both walls. You wanna stitch it, stitch it really, really well. And when you come down, you wanna roll your wrist, roll your wrist down. Make sure your angle changes every time, just like on pipe. Remember, third gear and 50, between 50 and 60, guys, is a good temperature for the hot pass with a 532, 8010, all right? Even on the other side, the same motion, the same way, the whole way through, okay, for the hot pass. All right. Now we're starting the opposite side. Now for the hot pass, guys, you can start with the throat first, throwing the hot pass there, and then start on the ears and come down and tie into the throat. But I'm showing y'all the ears first, okay? Um, on the opposite side, some people like to run the hot pass by whipping it, which I like to do, and some people like to throw circles, circles. But it's all personal preference, guys, okay? But right here, I'm showing y'all the whip. This is what I like to do, and I hope it helps y'all out for sure on the whipping. Right here, we're starting the other side. Now I'm doing the exact same thing like I did on the opposite side, exact same thing. Now, when we do the bottom side, you wanna turn down the machine, okay? Cause it gets real hot. So when you do the bottom on the, uh, on the throats, you wanna make sure to turn it down at least five or 10, okay? Cause if you run hot like that, it's just gonna create a lot of undercut. Just letting y'all know that right now, okay? But the rest is the same thing. And uh, just go with it, flow with it for sure. All right, now I'm starting the fills, guys. I'm still using a 532 8010 pipeline rod, and I'm still running at third gear, but I turned up to 60, went up 10. Um, still using the same whipping method, but I'm going a little bit slower so I can let it build, okay? I don't wanna go too fast. I wanna let it build so it can flush out a little bit quicker. But it's the same motion all the way through. You wanna stop when you're gonna hit the, the throat, you wanna stop right between, right before you're gonna to get to that, uh, to that strap, okay? It's like that the whole way through. You're stacking it just like a pyramid. You start from the bottom up. Always start from the bottom up, okay? 
And when you're doing that bottom uh, fill like we're doing right now, do not exceed over that bevel, okay? You want to keep a guide for yourself when you start that cap, okay? But it's the same way all the way through, guys, all right? Even on the opposite side. Now my body, now my body positioning, that's the way I like to, to run the branch. Um, like I said, if you want to use two hands, whatever you feel comfortable. But even on the opposite side, it's still the same exact method. Keep that guide for yourself for the cap. All right, now we're flushing it out, okay? We're still using a 532-8010 pipeliner. Um, I'm still running at third gear and 60. Nothing changes, except when I go to the cat, but once we get there, I'll let y'all know. Um, here, you wanna make sure, same way, take your time, let it build, okay? If you want it to flush out already, let it build. You wanna go 50-50 from that bottom bead. Still whipping it all the way through okay really watch that puddle to see if it's building enough for it for it to flush out the way you want it to okay like right here i'm whipping it but it looks like i'm doing circles at the same time now if you want to do circles <clears throat> on your on your fills that's fine there's no problem with that but make sure those circles are a little bit tight okay but that's me All the way through, guys. Always have your tie-in when you get to your throat, right before that strap. Same thing on the opposite side. Like I said, if you want to do circles, you can. But like I'm just, I'm just whipping it the whole way. But when I'm whipping it, I pause a little bit right in that middle, let that puddle spread the way I want it to, and whip it again. I'm watching that puddle the whole time. I'm not watching that rod. But make sure you're favoring the top, not much to the bottom. Because when you flush it out, you don't want it to be flush favoring the bottom, okay? If that makes sense. But it's the same way all the way through, guys.
All right, guys, now we're capping it, okay? Now, this is the finished product for sure, for sure. So you want to make it look presentable, okay? Now, I'm running at third gear and 50. I turned it down for the cap, okay, because the pipe's still hot. Or you can let it cool down, but sometimes you're not going to have time to let it cool down. Most of the time, you're not going to. But uh, I'm running at third gear. And 50 with the 532-8010 pipeliner again. Now, I chose to use a 532, but sometimes I like to cap it with 316, so just depending on how I feel on that specific day when I'm doing a branch. Um, personally, I like both, but just depending on what you feel. They both run good. But the 316 just fills it up a little bit more or quicker. But same motion, same whipping motion. Again, we're using the Blackface 87SA200 for this. Every machine kind of runs differently, but this is what are the temperatures, the settings, everything for the branch that I'm doing. Same thing on the opposite side, just whipping it nice and tight, okay? If you get inconsistent on that whip, the cap is gonna kind of look, of course, inconsistent. So make sure when you're whipping it, it's nice and the same. Because when you wire wheel it and everything, it's going to come out really nice. <clears throat> make it look presentable. If you need to make a guideline, go ahead and make a guideline. You know, I did for this one just so I can make it as presentable as I can. But sometimes I already have that guy there and I just go to town with it. It's just up to you guys, for sure. All right. Same thing over here. All right, now we're doing the, uh, the second B cap. Still running at third gear and 50 on the remote. Now right here, you definitely, definitely want to take your time letting it build. Because if you don't, then you're going to end up throwing a 4B cap. Now it just depends on what the QC wants. Uh, I've never seen a, a branch that was a one bead. Um, that's just me. Maybe there is out there, but most of the time, it's either a two bead or a three bead cap on the branch, okay? And also it depends on what branch you're gonna be testing on, either 375 wall or 250 wall, but most of them are 250. But it's mostly gonna be, you know, staggered caps. It's not gonna be a one bead. Hey, but I, I might be wrong. There's probably some other ones out there that are one bead. Still learning every day, guys. Still learning every day. Drop some knowledge on me if y'all can. <laughs> nice, tight whips. Make it as consistent as possible. Remember, this is your final product. This is what they're going to see. They're going to see your root when you do your branch. They're going to check that root. Now, the root is no good. And then no money. But if that root's good, that's awesome. Now the next thing they're going to check is your cap. And if your cap looks not presentable, then it is what it is, guys. So make sure those whips are nice and tight. Now here I'm throwing the final bead cap on top. So this is a 3B cap on this branch. Here I'm doing circles because I want it to build the way that I want to. Remember, you're in control of the metal. The metal is not in control of you. If you take your time, it will build. If you go fast, it's not going to build. So you just got to have that common sense to know like, hey, I need to add a little bit more metal on this top side. Let me go a little bit slower so it can build, okay? So in order for me to let it build like the way I want it to, I just did circles so it can spread a little bit more. 
But at the end of the day, it's still going to come out presentable. Like I said, guys, I'm not the best of the best. I stay humble. Um, I'm just trying to give you all my knowledge. And if my knowledge helps you out, that's awesome. That's great. But like I said, there's not a video out here that shows you these arc shots of the branch and everything. And there's a lot of people, I know a lot, a lot of pipeliners that burn branches like nothing, man. They be doing it in an hour, two hours, man, crazy. But like, like I said, they just, there's no videos out there. So I wanted to make this for y'all. And this is the way I do it. This is the way pipeliners taught me how to do it. So this is what I'm gonna be showing y'all. I really hope y'all appreciate what I'm what I'm doing here and the time that I took to make this. You know, it's it was a long process, guys. But uh, like I said, I just really want to help y'all out. I like to stay humble and give out as much help as I can, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, of course, I've seen guys throw branches that are slick. I mean, whoo! If I step on it, I'm gonna slip. That's how slick it is. <laughs> but you know, everybody has their own type of welding, and this is the way I weld, guys. And I'm happy with it. Alrighty guys, there you have it. 12 by 12 branch, fit up and weld out. Now I don't claim to be the best at all guys, not at all, but uh, I'm giving you all a glimpse of what I know and I really hope it helps you all out, okay? And if it did help you all out, make sure to like, share and subscribe, okay? Remember, burn, learn and eventually y'all gonna earn. Y'all have a good one.